Let's go over a couple of practice problems for quiz one. So starting with question one here, we have 9,805. We'd like to write this in expanded form. And the way this is broken apart, all we have to do is identify the power of 10 that goes in each of these places. Since nine is in the thousands place, we can write this as nine times 10 to the power of three. 10 cubed is the same thing as 1,000, so 9 times this is the same thing as 9,000. Moving on to this 8, 8 is in the hundreds place, and 10 squared is equal to 100. There is 0 in the tens place, so that's really 0 times 10 to the power of 1. And then lastly, this is in the ones place, and if we have 10 to the power of 0, 10 to the power of 0 is equal to 1, and so 1 times 5 equals 5. Moving on to question two, essentially doing this problem here in reverse, we want to take this value that is in expanded form and then write it in standard form. Here for emphasis, I'm saying that is in base 10. So this 10 squared is 100, 10 to the first is 10. There is no power of 10 here, and that's because the seven is in the ones place. So we start with two times 10 squared, that is two times 100, plus one times, I'll illustrate this as 10, and we have plus 7. To simplify this, this is 200 plus 10 plus 7. And if we add all the parts together, that's 217. And this is the final answer for this question here. In question 3, we'd like to convert 5 to base 6 into a base 10 number. The way we do this is by using basically both of these parts, the ideas that appeared in questions 1 and 2. We're going to first expand out 5 to base 6 using something like this, and then we're going to simplify it down to a single number using a process like this. We're going to start with what it means to be base 6 by definition. This 5 here is in the 6 to the power of 1 place, and this 2 is in 6 to the power of 0. Therefore, we can write this as, if you have 5 to base 6, this is really 5 times 6 to the first plus 2 times 6 to the power of 0. So you still expand things out like we did in this question, but here instead of using a base of 10, we're using a base of 6. Now that this thing is expanded, we can simplify this thing down to a single number. That number will be in base 10. So this is really 5 times 6 plus 2 times 1. 5 times 6 is 30, 2 times 1 is 2, and here we have 3, 2. For emphasis, I'll put that this is in base 10, and this is the answer for problem 3. In question 4, can we convert the base 10 numeral 95 into a base 6 number? And the trick is, so we have 95 and this is in base 10. Can you rewrite this using powers of 6s? So like it's some digit times 6 squared plus some other digit times 6 to the power of 1 and then some other potentially different digit times 6 to the power of 0. I think this is probably going to be the largest exponent on 6 that we'll need, but uh, let's see. The digits that go in place of the question marks, since we're in base 6, uh, for these, for each of those, you can only use 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. You can't use anything else. So looking at this largest place value in base 6, what is the closest we can get to 95 if you use a power of 6 squared? So you can go through and check the digits, and I checked this on a calculator, but 2 times 6 squared is 2 times uh, 36 is 72, which is less than 95. When I tried 3, uh, that was too big, so the closest I could get to 95, I'm going to write this down, is 2 times 6 squared because that is 72. And afterwards, I'm going to write down what is left over. To get that amount, you can take 95 and you can subtract 2 times 6 squared, which means you're subtracting 72. And when you look at that difference, you have 23. And that's what goes here. The trick now is to use powers of 1 and 0 with a base of 6 to get as close to 23 as possible. I know 6 to the first times 4 is 24, so that's too much. 
What this means is I'm going to use 6 to the first times 3, which is 18. I'm going to put that down as my new line. So 95 is the same thing as 2 times 6 squared plus 3 times 6 to the first. And I'm going to write down how much is left over after that. Well, 23 is the exact amount. And here we're taking 18 away from it. So the number that we want is, uh, let's see, that's 23 minus 18. And when we take this difference, we get 5. To complete this, we would like to use the last place value to represent 5 as something times 6 to the power of 0. Well, 5 times 6 to the power of 0 is actually 5 itself. And what this means is... 95, which is still in base 10, it's 2 times 6 squared, plus 3 times 6 to the first, plus 5 times 6 to the power of 0. From here, you can actually write down what the base 6 number is. So 95, which again is still 95 base 10, just by looking at the digits that appear here, here, and here, we simply collect those digits, and we put this as... 2, 3, 5. So 2, 3, 5 base 6 is the same value, the same number as 9, 5 base 10. So this is our final answer. And for the last question, question 5, we'd like to add the following base 5 numbers. Notice that we're only allowed to use the digits 0 through 4 if you're talking about base 5. So for, let me make note of that, for base 5, the digits that you're allowed to use are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. You can't use anything else. So the trick is, to add these two base 5 numbers together, you go through place value by place value and add the digits. If anything carries, you simply carry it over to the next place. So I'm going to start by asking, well, what is 4 base 5 added to 4 base 5? So what is... 4 base 5 added to 4 base 5. Well, this is the same thing as 4 base 10 added to 4 base 10. If you're working with a single digit, it doesn't matter the place value that you add in, be it 5 or 10. It's the same thing. Here, base 10 is nice to work in because, as you are aware, 4 plus 4 in base 10 is what we call 8. So when you add these two digits together, you get 8. But the problem is you can't use the symbol 8 because we're working in base 5. The trick is to take 8 and convert it back into a base 5 number. So how do we do that? So if you have 8, which is in base 10, to write this as a base 5 number, we're going to split it up as 5 plus 3. I chose 5 because that's the base that we're working with. I'm going to go further and say that, well, the number 5, 5 is really 1 times 5 to the first. And the 3 that's left over is really 3 times 5 to the power of 0. In writing it in this form, you can take the 1 and the 3, and that is, if you write 1, 3, base 5, that is the same thing as 8, base 10, which is the sum of these two numbers. That was a long way to go, but... When you add 4 and 4 and base 5, you get a 3 and you carry the 1. So I'm going to put this as, okay, that's 3. I know we're working in base 5. And I'm going to carry the 1 over here. Now, what's 1 plus 2 plus 0 in base 5? Well, the good news is, is that you get 3. And as long as you get a digit that's not bigger than 4, that's the digit that goes here. Nothing carries over. So 1 plus 2 plus 0 is simply 3 we are on to the last place value, where we have to add 4 and 1. Again, I'm going to put some work over here to represent how to add those two things together. So let's see. If you have 4 base 5, and you add that to 1 base 5, this is the same thing as adding 4 base 10 and 1 base 10. And when you add those, you get 5, which is a base 10 number. Now you want to break this up, and I'm going to write this as 5 plus 0. Again, I'm trying to introduce a 5 so I can look at the digits that appear in front of the values that we have. Let's see, 5 is really 1 times 5 to the first, 
that zero is really zero times five to the power of zero. What this means is if we take the one and the zero and just simply copy down one zero, that's one zero base five. So when you add four and one together in base five, you get zero and a one. So I'll put this as zero, one. Therefore, the answer to this problem is one, zero, three, three, base five. And that is the final answer.